a mic and a blood-stained hatchet. He's on my rhyme, they're full of depravity, drowning your ass like two scoops of gravity. So much despair, trauma and sadness, staring you down face first in a madness. All my life was anger and pain, it emptied my brain, barely let me have sane. They said what a waste, they said what a shame, so it's time. I just discovered mochi ice cream. These are so good. Oh my God. Um, I've never had mochi ice cream before, except when I was on the Cauliflower Alley Club, the, uh, we went to this Japanese restaurant, all you can eat, it was awesome. All you can eat for like 22 bucks. And they had mochi ice cream for dessert, which is Japanese. It's like this paste around ice cream. Oh my God, it's delicious. Ah, mmm. It's so good. In fact, I went to the local rest, uh, local Japanese grocer at home. Um, and uh, uh, I went to. Mm, I went to the local Japanese grocery store and bought out their whole selection of mochi ice cream because it's so delicious. Oh my god, it's so yummy. Ah, now I want more. But I have to finish the video blog. Today is May 3rd, and I am so behind in video blogging. I apologize. But that's the way it goes. Um, I want to address something first of all. Um, I put a few items up for us. Uh, uh, you know, I offered a few items, ring worn items, uh, a couple weeks ago for people who wanted to buy them on uh, YouTube. And um, apparently there was some negative feedback to that. Not a lot, but a little bit. And I wanted to address that because uh, the um, there is a, an interesting point I have to make. Calvin and Hobbes was my favorite cartoon for the longest time. I loved Calvin and Hobbes. And, uh, but the guy, Bill Watterson, who drew it, he didn't want to be all commercial. So he put out absolutely zero Calvin and Hobbes merchandise because he didn't want to commercialize it. So what he did, though was he alienated me as a fan because I wanted to buy the merchandise. To me, I, who cares if it's commercializing? What, because you make a t-shirt with Calvin and Hobbes on it? It would have been awesome. I mean, if you don't want to make the money, then give it away to charity. But, but by not selling it, by not making it available to people like me, you were screwing over your own fans is the way I saw it. That's the way I felt. Bloom County, I had a pair of Opus slippers that I wore forever because Bloom County, they weren't afraid. No, they were not afraid to put out Bloom County merchandise, Berkeley Breathed or whatever it is, however you pronounce his last name, Breathed. <laughs> I had to blow my nose. Hold on. The, uh, <laughs> ah. Anyway, Berkeley Breathed, Breathed, whatever. Maybe he breathed on me and that's why I had to blow my, blow my nose. Um. Anyway, the, um, he wasn't afraid to put out Bloom County merchandise, and he, yeah, he merchandised the crap out of it, but he didn't over-merchandise it. You know, I think you can over-merchandise something, absolutely, with the, um, but I think Bill Waterson was kind of a douche for not putting any merchandise out, you know, because Calvin and Hobbes was the bomb. Um, that was a dick move, Bill. You're a dick. Um, but thanks for, I'm not, but overall, you're a good guy because of all the stuff you put out. But in that capacity, you're kind of a douche. Um, so there. How does that tie into my point about selling my merch? Well, I've got so many requests over the years for people that wanted to buy Raven Ring Worn merchandise that I figure if I don't put it out for for um, for availability, that's kind of being a douche. Because what am I going to do with all of it? I'm not going to I'm not going to keep all of it. I mean, sure, I'm going to keep some for posterity, you know, um, in case I ever have a kid or something. You know, in case the dog ever has a kid and the dog's kid wants some. But, um, the, um, yeah, I, I just, you know, I'm, what am I going to do with a, with a thousand ring-worn shirts? You know what I mean? So, I just think it's cool I can put them out for sale. Another comment was that, um, I believe it was, was, what are you, poor? What are you, you didn't save your money? What, um, you need to make money this way? What are you, a Jew? Um, actually, well, let me ask the Jew part first. I don't, I guess I am a Jew because my mom was a Jew, but I don't follow the faith. And um, so I don't see how I really can be a Jew if I don't follow their, if I don't agree with anything or half the things they have to say. I don't follow the faith whatsoever. But apparently if your mom's a Jew, you're still a Jew, which really makes absolutely no sense. Um, but so what? 
Um, and besides, I think when they said, what are you, a Jew, they meant, was I being cheap? But the fact is, they say, well, what, maybe you haven't saved your money, right? Well, what if I hadn't? Does that make me a bad person? What if I made bad investments? What if I did all kinds of wrong stuff and I lost all my money and now this is the only way I can get it? Would you feel so bad? Would, would, I, would I be a dick then? Huh? Huh? Well, luckily, I haven't fallen into that position, and I'm doing quite well. But the fact is, I could be in that position. I could just as easy be in that position and be in a bad way and need to sell my stuff. Luckily, I don't. But it doesn't make me a bad person or a good person. It doesn't change anything about me. The main reason I make it available is because, yes, I, I can always use extra income. Who can? I'd be an idiot not to. But also, then the main reason is I want to make it available to my fans because I've had more fans want more stuff from me over the years, and I never really had an avenue to get rid of it. Not rid of it. Wow, that's, that sounds shameless. <laughs> Freudian slip, perhaps. I never had an avenue to uh, sell it to them or to give it to them or to get it to them um, over the years, although I did have an eBay store for a long time that I sold stuff. But I think you get the point. I don't want to belabor it. Um, I just want to point out that uh, the people that had the the hater attitude drank too much haterade today or yesterday or whenever they wrote that I don't know when and um, and I'm really all I hate the term haterade and hating you know they're just douches I will go with douches so anyway now I have some things I have to put over here this is um, there's a guy I'm gonna be working for in Laredo Texas and uh, so I'm coming down to Laredo, and that's uh, but it's not an actual show. It's going to be some personal appearances, and that'll be uh, May 13th, I believe. Um, and uh, but he wanted to say uh, he wanted me to put over that uh, he had two requests. If I could mention that I'll be coming to Laredo to pay to pay a visit to Ace Madness Nick Nikon, ooh Nikon, the Joker, and the rest of the guys in the LWA. And um, and then the second question, uh, the second thing is if I could answer what it felt like to step in a squared circle for the first time. Um, this is interesting. This is a very interesting question. Because I don't remember who my first opponent is. I have no fucking idea how I can't remember that. I mean, how could you forget that? I used to think when I talked to old-time wrestlers, how could you forget this moment? You know, which I learned later, well, you know, what was a big moment to me may have just been another day on the road for them. But my first match, I mean, I never thought anybody could forget who their first match was against. Although I do remember that I was shitting my pants off. I was terrified. Um, but uh, I still remember who it was against. In fact, I need to get a hold of Larry Sharp so I can find out, you know, because I'd like to know who my first match was against. And if anybody can find out, that would be awesome. I know who my second match was against. A second match? That was against J.J. Paradise. I like that name. He didn't. Uh, he didn't make it um, to the to the show. I don't even know how far he went, but um, that's a good name, JJ Paradise. And he had like these, um, like a light purple colored um, uh, long trunk, long sp uh, spandex uh, tights, and they had like a floral arrangement on the side too. I think you know, in between, like a panel of floral arrangement down the side. And he was about a buck, a buck ninety. In good shape, you know, really good shape, but skinny. Um, so I remember that, but I don't remember my first match. I don't know. That's weird. I remember, like, my third match was against a guy named Tony Da, D-A, Tiger. Tony Da Tiger in, like, a Tiger Strap match or something in, like, uh, Wildwood, New Jersey or somewhere. Um, so let's see. I put over the mochi ice cream. I put over the, uh, the Laredo thing. Oh, I wanted to put over this. BrutalButcherShop.com t-shirts. Brutal Butcher Shop. The guy makes the most amazing t-shirts here. I'm wearing one of his uh, shirts now. Let me slide back. Um, there you go. You can't see on the bottom. These are skulls and some cool writing down here. Uh, it doesn't really give the full effect here, but if I if you go to his uh, website, which is Brutal Butcher Shop, Shoppy, S-H-O-P-P-E.com, Man, he makes some amazing stuff. In fact, I'm gonna have him. I'm having him custom make me a design. Got an itch in my eye. Um, having him uh, custom make me a design for my um, for my next T-shirt I put out, which hopefully will be pretty soon. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I had some other stuff I had notes I was gonna make here. Um, 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, those notes aren't any good. So um, I will just talk now. Um, and what will I talk about? Let's see. Oh, there were some. Oh, there's been a lot of things. Like I've been reading some of the responses to my video blogs and why I don't put my wife on camera. Um, and that's actually not my choice because my wife is stunning. Uh, it's her choice. She doesn't like to be on camera. Um, the, um, you know how everybody says their wife or their girlfriend's hot, you know, and then you look at them and you're like, well, they're okay. Or, you know, whatever. My wife is stunning. Absolutely stunning. She hadn't even worked out in three years and she still has a six pack. Uh, it's really nauseating. The fact that she keeps a six pack and doesn't even diet or train anymore. Um, but she's, all, I, I mean, you can, any of the boys will tell you that she's stunning. Um, so, but she, it's her choice. She doesn't want to be on camera. She doesn't like to be on camera. She likes to be behind the scenes because behind every good man, there's a good woman with a foot up his ass. Um, so there. Um, no, that's just, uh, she doesn't like to be on camera. She used to model and she used to be, uh, well, I, she doesn't even like me bragging about her, but she used to be like a world-class gymnast and stuff like that. So anyway, oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. Uh, my boy Jericho got, um, he got bumped off to show what a scam that is on Dancing with the Stars. I mean, seriously, that that was such a scam. I mean, every Heinz Ward, come on, I don't care if you're a Steelers fan, he sucked. I mean, no offense, but he sucked. And Romeo was atrocious uh, on the last on yesterday's show, um, and then they still gave him like a ten or a nine, I think, uh, some nines. Um, and then they always kill that Mark Ballas and that Chelsea chick who are amazing. They, they smoke everybody and they get killed. But, uh, but really, Jericho was doing really well. But he kept getting underscored like by big time. And he kept like everybody, like he'd beat half the people. And then all of a sudden these people get higher scores. It was really annoying to watch. Um, but he took it really good. Uh, it was in good form. And um, I think he's going to have a career in the Hollywood world because, uh, you know, he's a good guy and he deserves it too. So I'm, I'm really rooting for him. Um, what else? Um, the, um, oh, no, I can't talk about that yet. I have something really interesting that's going to occur, but I can't talk about it yet because I'm not one of those people that likes to tell stuff before it happens because it half the time they don't happen. Although this I'm pretty sure of, but I hate to do that because a, I don't like spoilers. I hate spoilers. Now I don't mind pretending like I'm going to give a spoiler and then not tell it because that's kind of fun because that's kind of douchey uh and that's douchey in a good way but um spoilers are no fun like who wants to know anyway i would much rather find out christmas morning and yes i always celebrate christmas um yes i do um we always did as kids my parents we celebrated christmas um because let's face it who celebrates christmas for the religious thing of it people celebrate it because it's a holiday and they get presents that's what people celebrate it um don't kid yourself but um, would you rather open presents, uh, sneak in and find out what you're getting Christmas Eve or wait till Christmas morning to be surprised? I'm a Christmas morning kind of person. I'm just not big on spoilers. I don't want to know what's going to happen. I hate watching previews because they ruin the movie. They always show scenes that occur at the end of the movie. And I can always tell their scenes because if you see enough movies, you can tell shit like that. Like I'll give you an example. And oh, we're getting near up near 15 minutes. But now apparently I don't have to worry about it because... Apparently, YouTube has given me permission. Uh, I don't know if it's just me. Ha <laughs> uh, Probably other people, too, to, get, to go longer than 15 minutes. Although, I still will probably try and keep it around 15. But just for example, that movie um, the, uh, with Tom Hanks where he's stranded on the island with his best friend, the volleyball. Well, excuse me. Um, in the previews, they show a scene where it's obvious they are reuniting after him getting back from the island. Like, I mean, let's face it. You knew he's getting off the island. Well, you're 99% sure, but you don't know 100%. So why spoil it? I mean, seriously, why show a scene in the previews? I mean, is it going to make it any more interesting? I mean, all you're doing is, uh, it's just so irritating. I mean, you know, I mean, let's face it. We do know he's going to get off the island. We're pretty sure, but we don't know for sure. But now we know for sure because you ruined it for us with a goddamn spoiler. It's irritating. I mean, it really pisses me off. Um, that's why, I like, and my wife loves the spoiler. She loves the spoiler. She loves the previews. So she always wants to get to the movies on time, and I prefer to go and get there just as the movie's starting because I know how to time it because it's, like, two blocks away. Um, 
and she loves the preview, so I have to close my eyes and stick my fingers in my ears if it's a movie I really want to see, because I know they're going to ruin everything, you know. And then sometimes nowadays they'll have like an 18-minute trailer, which, you know, be like, you know, they just show the whole movie in miniature, so there's no point even going to see the movie. Although, what I do want to see on a completely unrelated matter is I want to see the Adjustment Bureau, but it already has left the theater by me, which pisses me off. And, uh, and Dylan Dog is not at the theater by me. I'm so pissed about that. And I don't like to go to any other theater but the one by my house because they have all, because I'm so comfortable there because they have, I know everybody there. They have all my foods I like there. They're all ready to see me when I show up. They're all excited. Well, maybe not, but I'm excited when I show up. Um, I know exactly how long it takes me to get from my house to there because it's like two blocks. I park underneath, underground, where it's the underground parking, where it's always better parking and there's less people there. I know how long it takes me to get upstairs, order my food, well, go to the bathroom, go and sit in the theater, and how to make it exactly, and boom, they're just getting ready for the movie to start. So I don't like to go to other theaters. Plus, they're further away, too. You know, I like to, I like to, um, I'm pretty lazy. That's pretty much it. No, I just like that theater. It's just the best theater. You know, any other really good theaters are like 20, 30 minutes. And who the hell wants to go 20, 30 minutes? You know, so now I I can't see Dylan Dog until it comes out on the video or the Adjustment Bureau. And uh, although Hoodwinked 2 came out, I want to see that. Yep. Hoodwinked 1 was awesome. Uh, if anybody hasn't seen Hoodwinked 1, go see Hoodwinked 1 because it was awesome. And uh, Patrick Warburton or whatever, however you pronounce his name, uh, from Rules of Engagement, he plays, uh, basically he plays Fletch from the movie Fletch, only as a, uh, as a big bad wolf Fletch. Yeah, he does. Seriously, it's awesome. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, I'm done for today, and I'm going to go eat some more mochi ice cream, and because uh, I love it. I love the mochi ice cream, and uh, play with my doggy Gabriel, and uh, wait for my wife to cook dinner so I can fatten myself up for the winter solstice even though summer's on the way. Thank you and good night. And as always, bye-bye and bye bonds. And also, real quick, if you're interested in buying Raven merchandise, um, ring-worn stuff, please email us at office at theravenaffect.com. Let us know what you want, and we'll take care of it. And um, and for all you uh, haters, uh, oh, there it is, hold on. Oh, there it is. Oh, let me give you two of them. Can you hear that? Let me turn it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, in your face.